Hello friends, these are four photographs which can be kept as spotters for examination. All the four, no doubt, is related to ear. First and second, these two, these two pictures are postural abscesses. And in the first picture, you can see it is extending to the upper neck also. And in this, you can notice the uh, displacement of right pinna. Uh, which is displaced downwards, forwards and laterally. Compare it with this left side which is normal. Here because of the postural abscess, uh, the pinna is pushed downwards, forwards and laterally which is very uh, characteristic of a postural abscess. And uh, here uh, this is a postural fistula. And along with the class on my uh, Acute mastoiditis, I told you that once the uh, infection spreads or it uh, may be, becomes a coalescent mastoiditis, it breaks the cortical bone and after that it forms a superiostal abscess and then when it breaks the overlying skin, it becomes a fistula. So this is postural fistula. Okay. So today's class, we can deal with the abscesses in and around the ear. So those were the photographs of two adult patient and one child and the child was having a postural abscess along with the displacement of the pinna which is very characteristic and the adult again uh, one was a postural abscess and another one was a postural fistula. So today we will deal with the mastoid abscesses okay which is again a complication of separative otitis medium. Right? So the most common mastoid abscess is a postural abscess. And this postural abscess uh, happens, I already told along with the class on sub, uh, complications of separative otitis media that the spread of infection can be either th through bone erosion or through the uh, thrombophlebitis or through preformed pathway. In mastoid abscess, there is both uh, bone erosion as well as uh, thrombophlebitis. Postural abscess is the commonest mastoid abscess and that will form over the McEwen's triangle. So what is this McEwen's triangle? McEwen's triangle. What is that? It is a uh, triangle formed by three imaginary lines. And what are these imaginary lines? It is formed by three imaginary lines. What are they? One passing through the posterior root of or superior temporal line. One is this one. It is a superior temporal line. And the second line uh, for your information, this is a uh, temporal bone uh, with an external auditory canal here and I have superimposed the pinna over that and in the external auditory canal, this is the posterior and this is the anterior. So this is the root of zygoma, posterior root if extending as a superior temporal line. So above by the superior temporal line and another line passing through superior and the posterior wall of the external posterior canal okay superior and the posterior margins so this is the external artery canal the line should pass through superior as well as the posterior canal wall and the third line um, should uh, it should be a tangent to the external artery canal and it should be perpendicular to the first line okay so I'll erase the pinna for the time being and the first line is a superior temporal line another one uh, passing through the posterior as well as the superior uh, margins of the external artery canal and the third one which is it should be perpendicular to the first one and it should be tangent to the external artery canal okay so this part roughly forms the McEwen's triangle superiorly by the superior temporal line and uh, Anteriorly line passing through superior as well as the posterior margins of the external artery canal and the 
third one which is perpendicular to the first line and tangent to the external trigonal. So in between forms the McEwen's triangle which is the surface landmark for mastoid random. And you have noticed that, you, uh, you, will, uh, you must have noticed that the bone in this McEwen's triangle is cribriform. It's like seam like. Okay. So there are so many vascular channels. So infection from the uh, mastoid andrum will pass through these vascular channels and will come out uh, forming a uh, subperiosteal abscess or the uh, postoral abscess. Okay, so infection on this area, I, uh, this forms the postoral abscess. And this is more common in children and you have seen the characteristic displacement as outwards, forwards. This is the uh, posterior root of zygoma and there are zygomatic ASL situated at the uh, posterior root of zygoma. Actually, uh, where it comes in relation to uh, pinna, if I draw a pinna here, this is external artery canal and if I draw a pinna, it will come like this. Isn't it? External artery canal. So, this uh, infection of the zygomatic cells will cause a zygomatic abscess. Okay. So, here comes the zygomatic abscess. So, in relation to the pinna, it will be uh, in front and above the uh, pinna. Isn't it? So, it is in the preauricular region. So, that will form an abscess, zygomatic abscess there. Which muscle comes there? There comes the zygomatic temporalis muscle. Isn't it? To this attaches the temporalis muscle here. A fan shaped muscle. So this abscess will be either superficial to or deep to. Both ways it can happen. Either it can be superficial to the temporalis muscle or the abscess can go deep to the zygomatic muscle. So according to that, um, there will be presence or absence of lid, upper eyelid edema also. Okay. So zygomatic abscess forms in front and above the uh, pinna can be either superficial or deep to the temporalis muscle. They will be associated uh, edema of the upper eyelid. And the third is a lux abscess. What is that lux? Or meatal. Okay, lux abscess or a meatal abscess. That is, you can see here is a uh, mastered andrum and uh, in relation to that comes the posterior wall of the external artery again. Okay, isn't it? So, between the mastered andrum and the uh, external artery canal, there is a bony wall. And this pus causes this hyperemic decalcification um, and also the osteoplastic resorption will cause breakage of this uh, posterior bony canal. And in that case, what will happen? The pus will break into the external auditory canal. So that will cause a meatal abscess or a lax abscess. And you can see the uh, swelling or the abscess deep in the external artery canal. Okay, so that is a lax abscess or a meatal abscess. It comes here, lax abscess. So this is a postural abscess, this is a zygomatic abscess and this is a lax abscess. And in some cases, here comes the uh, peritubal cells, anteriorly, isn't it? Peritubal. So if the infection spreads or the abscess spreads along the peritubal cells, it can track to Remember our external or um, middle layer, uh, our posterior wall, floor, this is the anterior wall, isn't it? And uh, this is the roof of the external artery, again. I mean uh, of the middle layer, okay, six walls. So here comes our eustachian tube. So, if there is infection, this is the uh, mastered space. This will be the, uh, from the middle layer, adictus goes to the mastered. If the posterior wall of the uh, middle layer along with the, that of the bony canal, if it is uh, destroyed, that will cause a lax abscess. And if the uh, cells around the tubal, eustachian tube, that's the peritubal cells are infected, that will cause what? Parapharyngeal and again a retropharyngeal abscess. Okay, 
And what is in connection here? Which vessel comes here? It is an internal carotid artery. So along with this goes the carotid sheath. So infection of the peritubal cells can spread to the parapharyngeal or the retropharyngeal space going for a uh, parapharyngeal or retropharyngeal abscess. And again, if it tracks along the internal carotid artery or the carotid sheath, you can go down forming a superior mediastinal abscess. Okay. Uh, how it goes? Along the carotid sheath. That is the Lincoln's highway. Otherwise called Lincoln's highway. That we can discuss in detail along with the uh, respective abscesses. So, this is a, uh, so the retropharyngeal abscess or the parapharyngeal abscess occurs when there is infection of the peritubal cells here. And again, this uh, parapharyngeal uh, or the retropharyngeal abscess can also occur from petrous uh, apex. If there is a petrocytis or a petrous apicitis, from there also this infection can spread to the parapharyngeal space. So, in a case of autogenic parapharyngeal abscess, there are two chances. One is from the peritubal cells and another one is from the petrous apex. And this is the uh, tip of mastoid. From there arises two muscles. Which are they? One is, uh, this is sternomastoid and this is uh, digastric. Isn't it? Sternomastoid and the posterior belly of digastric. That is attached to the uh, tip of mastoid area. So if there is a, a coilus and mastoiditis, this infection can cause uh, bone erosion there erosion of the tip cells and infection can track along the sternomastoid. Okay, if it tracks along the sternomastoid or along the uh, posterior belly of diastric, it will result as a neck swelling. Isn't it? So in that uh, uh, photograph I showed you a child with a, a neck swelling and that can be either a sitelly abscess or it can be a basal abscess. What are they? So the infection spreads deep to the sternocleidomastoid. It forms a neck abscess and it is called a Bessel's abscess. Okay. Of the abscesses, the most common one is a postural abscess, I told you. And the second most common in our area is found to be a Bessel's abscess. Okay. So Bessel's abscess, when it track along the sternocleidomastoid, and if it tracks along the uh, posterior belly of digastric and going towards the uh, posterior triangle, posterior triangle of neck, it is called a sitelly abscess. I'll write it here. So regarding the sitelly abscess, there are three root of formation of sitelly abscess. One, as I already told you, from the tip, this can come uh, behind the posterior belly of digastric and it forms an abscess between the uh, tip of mastoid and the angle of jaw, angle of mandible, in this space. Or, you can present posterior to the uh, mastoid uh, region, that is between the uh, occipital temporal suture line. So, this pus will track along the occipital posterior, here comes the occipital bone. So between the uh, occipital temporal suture line or along the posterior mastoid emissary vein. There are two, I said there are three root of spread of a sitelly. One is along the occipital temporal suture line or along the posterior mastoid emissary vein or it will track from the tip, tip cell uh, behind the posterior belly of digastric. In either case, it will present as a cervical or a neck abscess. Okay. Or usually it is seen in the posterior triangle of the neck. This sitelly uh, triangle. What is that? Sitelly's angle. Sitelly's triangle. Actually it is another name for. Sitelly's angle is an another name for sinodural angle. Okay. So that is uh, between the. During cortical mastoidectomy. Uh, you can see the sinodural angle. Between the uh, tegmen. Uh, middle fossa dura. And the uh, sinus plate. Okay. So that is uh, sitelly angle which is the one of the uh, site of an uh, These are the abscesses in relation. What are they? One is a postural abscess, then a zygomatic abscess, lax abscess when it breaks into the external auditory canal, then a basal abscess when it tracks uh, 
along with the sternocleidomastoid and uh, sitelli abscess either through the occipital uh, temporal suture line or the posterior mastoid emissary vein or along the posterior venular digastric. So these are the abscesses. In whatever the abscess, the clinical features are the same. The patient will present as fever, high grade fever, then uh, presence of uh, localized swelling along with features of, uh, features of abscess formation along with the presence of otorium. Okay. In any case, the investigation is that the investigation of choice is in a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone along with the CT scan of the neck. Okay, so CT, HRCT temporal bone plus CT scan of the neck is the investigation of choice. You have to differentiate this from. So what are the differential diagnoses? One, what comes here? Here comes the parotid, isn't it? So the parotid gland. So it can be a parotid infection, parotid abscess. So second can be an upper neck, cervical lymphadenitis. A third can be a parapharyngeal abscess or it can be an infected brachial cyst or it can be an internal jugular vein thrombosis. All these are the differential diagnoses. Mainly the uh, cervical lymphadenitis or a parotid abscess or an internal jugular vein thrombosis or infected brachial cyst or a parapharyngeal abscess. This has to be differentiated by doing a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone along with the CT scan of the neck. Okay. So you have confirmed that there is an abscess as a complication of separative otitis media. Then treatment. Treatment is uh, first under admit the patient and under uh, appropriate antibiotic. Appropriate antibiotic how? It is depending upon the culture and sensitivity of the pus, pus from the ear. Start on intravenous uh, antibiotic, then incision drainage of the abscess. Treatment. Treatment is IND of the incision and drainage of the abscess, and along with the mastoid exploration. Okay. Incision drainage of the abscess along with the mastoid exploration. I said mastoid exploration because in most of the cases, if it is as a complication of a coilus and mastoiditis, uh, you will need a cortical mastoidectomy. But if it is due to a cholesteatoma spreading, then you have to go for a modified radical mastoidectomy. So in general, the treatment of an uh, autogenic neck abscess is incision drainage of the abscess. Uh, followed by a mastoid exploration that is under parenteral antibiotic coverage. Okay, so this uh, neck abscess is usually it's a usual clinical entity. It's not so rare and also it can be asked in uh, as a short note and also in spotters you will get this. So study this.